Hey guys and welcome back to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to show you how to create some interesting looking warped text in Adobe Illustrator. So let's head onto the computer now and we'll show you how to do this. Okay so before we start be sure to download the free template file from the link in the description. This is exactly the same file that we're working from here so you can follow along from home. So you'll notice on the left hand side we have the full effect of what we're creating here. It's this warped text, this is very simple to do. And over to the right we have another artboard which is the one we're going to be working on. Now we're going to make a slightly different looking one just based on the font we've picked here. So we're actually using an italicized font and and if you are using your own font we'd recommend using something with quite a heavy weight and preferably a condensed font as well. It does give a slightly better effect when you use a typeface like this. All we have here is some outlined text so you don't need the font we're using, you can just use this text or you can type out your own and outline that. So the first thing we're going to do is ungroup this. I'm going to click ungroup. With my selection tool I'm going to click and drag over the first three words and I'll group these together and then I'll grab the word flow. And group that together and I'm just going to pull the word flow down and don't worry we can align all of this properly at the end although what I'll do first is just align these to be the same width so with my alignment tools up at the top I'm just going to left align the word flow and then scale this up holding shift to make sure it scales proportionately I'll make this the same width and then I'll drag it down to the bottom the next thing we want to do is divide this text up so what I'm going to do is grab my rectangle tool and just using my smart guides here I'm going to click and drag a rectangle over the word flow and I'm just going to change this to be a stroke with no fill just so we can see the text underneath. And I'm just going to make some copies of this same rectangle making sure that the smart guides are snapping to the bottom of the previous rectangle. So I'll select both of them now and I can duplicate both of them, snap that together and I'll do one more and then I just want to select all of these and I'm just going to drag these up so they fit with the height of the text. With my selection tool click and drag over this whole lot so all of the rectangles and the text and I want to go over to my pathfinder and select the divide option. So what this is doing is any overlapping paths, this is kind of creating new shapes out of these overlapping paths. And what I want to do now is select all of the areas outside of the text, so any of these rectangles that are outside of the text areas. An easy way to do that is if I just grab my magic wand tool over on the left hand side and just click on any of these areas and that's essentially just going to select all of the objects that have the same same properties. So I can just press delete now and we are left with our text and if I hover over it you can see this is all sectioned out now from where the paths of the rectangles were overlapping. So this is exactly what we want. I click on it you can see we have all the sections here. So what I want to do now is just make some copies of this. So I'm just going to drag this down and holding alt and dragging you can see I can click out some copies easily this way. And what I'm going to do with this copy I've made I'm going to ungroup and I just want to delete the bottom layer of segments segments here. So just clicking and dragging over the bottom section, I can just press delete. If I can just keep doing this, if I select all of it again, make a copy holding alt and hold shift as well to make sure it's moving up in a perfectly vertical line. Click and drag over the bottom section, press delete again, and we'll do this until we're left with just one layer left. So on to the final one here and there we go. What I'm going to do now is just click and drag over each section and with my pathfinder I'm just going to unite all of these sections and this will also group them together. So it's doing two things in one blow here. You can see all of these are grouped together. The only one that isn't is this top one because we didn't have to unite anything. So I'll just group that with command G, control G on a PC. What I'm going to do now is click and drag over all of them and I'm going to go over to my align panel and we have have an option here for distribute spacing so I want to vertically distribute the spacing and what that means if I click it it's going to make sure the spacing between each of these sections of text is the same. So that's actually maybe a bit too spaced out for my liking so what I'll do is just bring down our top section a bit more, drag it all again and do the same. It's getting closer maybe still a bit big so I'll pull the top one up. Again we can just reposition this afterwards so it's more about getting the spacing right in this instance. Okay so that's more what I'm after here. Here. So now we're ready to apply our warp effect. So what we need to do first is click and drag over all of the text and make sure it's grouped. So again just command G or control G on a PC and if we go up to the effect menu we are looking for warp and then within here there is a wave option. So I'm just going to click this and you can see already this is kind of creating the effect we're looking for. So I've got this set to a horizontal wave. You can also choose vertical which gives us a slightly different look and if I adjust the bend value 
you can see what's happening here. It's warping all of this text because it's grouped and giving it this wavy look. Go back to horizontal, you can see this is just changing the axis in which this is working. We can also change the horizontal and vertical distortion, but just be aware that this can really skew the text quite a lot. I'm just going to leave these values at zero for this example. I'll click OK and this is the effect pretty much done. Now you can see if I click on the text and zoom in, we still have our original paths showing. To sort this out, I can go up to Object and Expand Appearance and that's going to change the paths to match the effect that we've applied here. What I'll do finally, over on the left hand side, I'm just going to click this double ended arrow and that's going to flip the fill to a stroke. I'll move our top text down a touch and I'm just going to group all of this together. Over in our line panel, I'm going to change our Align 2 option to the artboard and then I can just center this vertically and horizontally and I might scale this up a touch as well. I'll click on this and ungroup again and to kind of match the look that we've got on the left hand side I'm just going to ungroup our warped text here and I'm just going to change the opacity on each section. So up at the top we'll go from about 20% opacity and just keep building this up. Okay, and that's kind of the effect we're going for. The option we've created is slightly different from that on the left hand side and that's purely just the font we've gone for. So because we've gone for this italicized font, it's a little bit more kind of offset looking. If you want to create the effect that we've got on the left hand side, just go with a standard condensed heavy font and you will get a boxed out look here. So there you have a very simple way of creating some interesting looking warped text in Illustrator. If you have any questions at all, do let us know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, remember to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you'd like to know more about our full graphic design course, visit graphicdesignerpro.com. See you next time.